Rub up your engines! All right, with the price of cars and vans going sky high, some people are selling used ones for more than they cost new. You may have to go used pretty old. How old is too old? How many miles is too many miles? Well, stay tuned, you're gonna find out. Now, this Toyota Sienna, it has 190 something thousand miles now. He bought it with 160 something thousand miles for 1500 bucks about nine months ago. So, he didn't pay much, but on the other hand, it's a Toyota. Now he made a big mistake previous to that. He went out and bought a used Dodge Caravan. Now he only paid 900 bucks for it. Hilarious enough, after he bought it, he started watching my videos and saw my videos that said, one of the worst cars ever made, don't buy one of these. Well, after eight, nine months of driving and spending thousands, he said to heck with that. He got rid of that and he got the Sienna, which he loves. From New York City. So of course, it's gonna have a lot of superficial rust on it, but it's still a Toyota van. These cloth seats can take a beating and still come back. They're not in bad shape. He's got the back ones down. He uses the transport stuff. If you want, you can put the one, two, three rows of seating back. And look, he's got a thank you Scotty sign in it. Fan belt needs tightening, but that's no big deal. 192,959 miles on this baby. And as you can see under the hood, it's got the ultra reliable V6 variable valve timing, the intelligent version with a 3.3 liter engine. Now this is an old style, so you can see that's plastic. It's got a rubber timing belt. Okay, he only paid 1500 bucks for the van, so he paid a mechanic to put the timing belt on. You wanna do that, then you don't have to think. It's a rubber timing belt. It's gonna be rotten, it's gonna break eventually. You put a new one on and a water pump, then you don't have to think about it for 100,000 miles or more. They tell you to change them every 100K, I've seen some though with 300. They're still the original belt and they still run. But he was wise, he changed it because he drives all over the place in it. This baby started out in New York, but he's moving to Alabama to go to school. So soon it'll be a Southern car. Now, when you see a Northern car like this, you're always gonna see superficial rust up there, down there. It doesn't mean much. What you care about is the undercarriage. Now the hubcaps are gone and the rims have rust on them, but they don't really care. Steel can get a lot of superficial rust and still work fine. And look at the frame. Solid as a rock. No real rust, but that doesn't surprise me. Because by 2003, Toyota had mastered anti-corrosion when they build these things. They paint them electrostatically in the factory. They have zinc-based primer. If these things aren't scratched under the bottom, even living in New York City, this thing has no serious rust on it. Now, if you look at a car, say, that's from Michigan or North Dakota, where they really throw the salt out, you still want to check it to see, because if you hit big bumps and you hit speed bumps and stuff, if it scratches the undercarriage, then, yeah, it can start to rust. But in this case, solid as can be. You can see in here the exhaust. It didn't take such a great <laughs> shape as the rest of the car because that's just, you know, steel. We started up. Look, it's a racing van. Not outrageously loud, but not quiet like a stock one. But you can see the body lines are still clean. The trunk still holds itself up. And man, look at the space these things have. You take those back seats out, you can use it like he does to deliver stuff. And if you wanna carry a bunch of people, just put the seats back in. He left the seats back in New York because he's moving furniture and boxes to Alabama where he's going to school, University of Alabama. Roll Tide! This is the ultimate carrier. This came with a roof rack. You can put even more crap on the top if you want. Now granted, it needs a door handle. So I'd say he got a good deal paying 1500 bucks for it. Now yeah, he put a timing belt, did some little work. He's putting about 2000 into it, but for 3500 bucks, I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing rolling down the road 10, 15 years from now. These are solid built vehicles. So if you have to get an older one, because the newer ones cost too much, don't poo poo it. The old ones still have lots of room. Like I said, he's got the other seats back in New York, so you get a lot of seats with them too. There's nothing wrong with buying one of these things old. 
The only other thing you really got to worry about, the intermediate steering shaft gets a little worn. You see, it's got a little bit of play, and it costs you a thousand something bucks to buy the new shaft assembly down here. But I've seen people drive them this way for years, and they're still going down the road. Listen to the engine hum. The Toyota, they don't make much noise. The AC still works. The electric cooling fans work. These are well-made vehicles. If you're gonna buy one use, of course, you want a mechanic like me to check it out, but take it on a good road test like we're going to. You can learn a lot about it just by driving it for 10 minutes. AC blows freezing cold, put in gear, it doesn't shake. And the first thing you notice is, you're not way up in the air, but you're not low either. They got good clearance. Ooh, I like that Cherry Bomb muffler. It makes it into an aggressive Sienna van. You drive around, you look for bumps and clunks, it really doesn't have any responsive steering, even though the shaft's a little bit worn on the bottom. If you go like this, you notice it doesn't do much because it's worn, so you just have to give it a little more push. It's not outrageous. It doesn't need to be changed right away, but it does annoy quite a few people who want perfection in a car that you would change that lower unit down there. They just wear out and get too much play. Brakes work perfectly fine. No clunking, no thumping, no wheel bearing noise. Still handles pretty good. Steering wheel's not shaking, it just has a little bit of play. Now these things are not race cars. They weren't meant for that, so let's see what it does when we floor it. It does have a V6 engine. That's the fan belt squealing. Tranny still shifts smooth as can be. And other than that squealing fan belt that needs tightening, hey, I wouldn't think twice about jumping in this thing and driving to California. But it's also You'll have to bring some CDs with you if you want some music. <laughs> really, look at the roll on. We're going 50, you floor it. It accelerates, it's no dog once it's rolling. You got a lot of weight in the van, realize that. But there's no problem passing people with this thing. Even though it's got 192,000 miles on it. Now, if this had been a Chrysler van, like the Chrysler van that he bought that was a pile of crap, no, you don't want to buy one with high mileage. I mean, he only paid 800 bucks for that, but it was still a pile of junk. This, he paid 15, and it's no pile of junk. It still runs quite well. Temperature gauge is pretty normal, just below middle. It idles fine, doesn't shake. All the windows work. The AC's freezing cold. And like I said, it handles quite well. Let go of the steering wheel, it tracks straight. Just follows the drainage of the road like any normal car will. You get pretty much in the middle, it goes in the middle. Of course you can't trust anybody when you're buying a used car. That's why you gotta road test them. You hit the brakes hard, the steering wheel has a little shake to it. That's because it needs brake rotors. You don't have to do it right away, it just means they're slightly warped. And with 192,000 miles, that doesn't surprise me. You can get brake rotors and pads for these things cheap enough in any discount auto parts store, and they work perfectly fine. And this particular one, listen, I really like the sound of that cherry bomb muffler. <laughs> gives it a little more oomph. And it actually gives it a tiny bit more horsepower. Take it on straight roads, crooked roads. This vehicle's in excellent shape. And being a Toyota Sienna van, I've seen many of these with over 500,000 miles on it. He bought this thing nine months ago. He's put 30,000 miles on it. And it doesn't burn oil even yet. They're really solid built vehicles as long as they haven't been wrecked and you road test them get one of these vans used get an older one hey there's nothing wrong with that it's not like it's a dodge caravan it's gonna fall apart like a chinese motorcycle these are solid built vans but do listen to me don't buy one of these dodge vans used cause look what's coming up a dodge van that's broken by the side of the road well, there's something you see every day. No surprise there. But whether you're living in suburbia or doing like this guy's doing. Moving from New York City to go to the University of Alabama and using it to move all of his stuff. These used Toyota Sienna vans are very reliable. And they're a very good choice for many different types of uses. Do like he did. Take all the seats out. Make it a cargo van. Really care about the exterior. Heck, you can get them repainted. I met a guy in Rhode Island. He had a really old one. He got it repainted at one of these Mako places. 
they painted the whole thing. He got a heck of a deal. He only paid like $195 and it was a decent paint job. So now you know a little bit more about high mileage vans and if you're being priced out of the late model, $1,500 and then two grand to fix it up for $3,500 investment is a good move. They can run a long time. They're solid. They can last. There's nothing wrong with buying an older high mileage one. But like the broken down Dodge van we just saw on the road. You want to stay away from those things when they get any kind of mileage on them. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.